Whoops, the airline slipped. When we had American Airlines on the show last Tuesday, I had no idea that interview would send the entire airline cohort plummeting. That's exactly what happened. American CEO Doug Parker told us there was a good deed of deal of new capacity coming on the industry, perhaps too much. Why is it so worrisome? All right, for decades, the business was terrible because the airlines were always engaged in ruinous competition with each other. Just endless price wars, endless bankruptcies. But starting a few years ago, there was a wave of mergers and acquisitions to the point where the company's finally able to make consistent money and get the uh, return on capital. <laughs> Actually, make a lot of money. However, if the airlines are now adding too much capacity, that means maybe the bad old days of excessive competition could be back, which is why the stocks have been crushed over the past week. And it's not just American that's talking about new capacity. On the same day as our interview with Doug Parker, Southwest Airlines CFO, Tammy Romo came out and said that our airline's capacity could increase by 7 to 8% this year. That news caused Kramer faced Southwest to tumble 9% in a single session. It's only gone lower since then. Clearly, love's for sale. Love, L-U-V, is the symbol of Southwest. So how concerned should we be? Do we need to be worried? Or is the market overreacted to this news about increased capacity, creating a nice buying opportunity in a very well-run airline, one that's long been known as the best operator in the country, longest record of profitability, not to mention a stock that was best performing in the S&P 500 last year, up 124%. Let's take a closer look with Gary Kelly, the chairman and CEO of Southwest Airlines, a total straight shooter. Get a better sense of where his company's headed. Mr. Kelly, welcome to Mad Money. Hey, great to be with you, Jim. You know, Gary, I'm not going to try to paraphrase. I'm going to play a quote that sent these stocks down by Doug Parker. And maybe you can illuminate us about whether it was the right reaction by the stock market. Go ahead. Some capacity is being added, not by us, right. by some of our competitors. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we will obviously respond to that. But we're not going to be, we're not going to be the ones that are But how do we know it's not going to be the old? Yeah, it sounds like a price war. Well, plain and simple. And we've gotten used to not having price wars in the airline business. You know, our, our competitors are always complaining about Southwest, and, and we're just going to continue to focus on running a, a great airline, offering great customer service, uh, and, and being profitable and, and hitting our returns on capital. So uh, we, our plans have not changed. Uh, we have in, plans to increase our seats uh, here in 2015 uh, uh, roughly 3%. And what is interesting is... Uh, virtually everyone in the industry is adding more seats than Southwest Airlines. We're flying longer, uh, but in terms of matching customers and seats, uh, which is the most uh, uh, accurate way to think about growth, uh, we're roughly 3%. And, um, uh, and again, everybody but United Airlines uh, has at least that much or more uh, in, in the United States. It does seem, as Credit Suisse called you, the perceived villain, not the actual one. But they're saying that you've added a string of capacity increases that are bothersome and suggests, as a quote, a lack of discipline. You seem to indicate that's not the case at all. Well, you know, first of all, uh, we, we are very sensitive what our investors think about uh, capacity growth at Southwest Airlines. And uh, I acknowledge uh, that that's something that they're concerned about. It's, it's obvious here over the last week. Uh, our plans have not changed. Uh, we have a unique opportunity to grow at Dallas Love Field. And Jim, I know you're very familiar with that. Uh, the vast majority, two thirds of our growth uh, is oriented towards Dallas. And um, over the long term, uh, I, I think that this industry domestically has gotten pretty mature. I think that we can grow as one of the low-cost providers, but I don't think that we can grow any faster than GDP, and we don't have any plans to. We have uh, very sensible aircraft plans, uh, certainly throughout uh, the rest of this decade. So, um, you know, before last week, everybody thought our growth plan seemed to be fine. Uh, as you mentioned, our, our Tammy Romo, our CFO, provided a range of guidance. We are going to manage to the low end of that range. Uh, our our uh, available seat mile growth uh, will be a little bit more than our seat growth, but uh, it will be around 7% for this year. Uh, and likewise, we will manage aggressively to the low end of that range for next year. Most of the growth in 2016 uh, is simply carryover uh, from 2015. Well, Gary, is this the other the thing that- I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Well, I was just gonna, Jim, I was just gonna add one other quick thing uh, that I think you will know. If you look at our uh, fleet growth over the past four years, it has been literally flat. Right. Well, we might be up by three airplanes when you combine uh, AirTran into Southwest. Uh, our available seat mile growth is uh, virtually flat. So we've been very disciplined. Uh, I think history would show that we're going to do our best to match uh, the supply of seats to demand. And then finally, uh, if, you, if you look at the opportunity that we have in Dallas, 
which has been a near monopoly on many long haul markets, we've been able to add flights, lower fares. Uh, those new flights that we've added are almost all full. Um, it, it's so full that in fact the uh, city of Dallas is going to have to build a parking garage to accommodate all the demand and our Dallas profits are uh, system average. So we're having a very strong year. Our first quarter profits were triple a year ago. Um, well, I'm very excited. Well, Gary, is this the very chance? So when you said the things year. flat in terms of growth, but now you uh, have 774 million shares in 2011, 674 million shares just most recent. You got a billion dollars of stock bought back within a year, and you just announced a huge $1.5 billion buyback. Are you still standing there and buying the stock? I mean, isn't that what you're managing the planes right? Should you be managing that buyback so that you're taking advantage of this? Well, Jim, yeah, I think we're trying to uh, create uh, shareholder value. We're trying to return uh, value to shareholders at the same time. And uh, as you pointed out, the $1.5 billion is a, a record share repurchase for us. So uh, we're able to grow the airline this year without adding any aircraft because we've been focused on merging AirTran over the last several years, and our fleet was underutilized. So. Uh, not only is the expansion profitable from a revenue uh, perspective, uh, but we've got idle capacity, and by increasing our flying, we're actually reducing our unit costs. Okay, well, Gary, Gary uh, I mean, our, I'm going to go back to the full plane. On, uh, on Monday this week, uh, Monday, June 1, you will be flying 11 flights from uh, Dallas to Midland, Odessa. Are those flights really full now that oil's going down so much? Well, you know, managing our schedule is very dynamic, and uh, of course, the impact on the oil industry has been huge uh, with the plummeting oil prices. So, uh, those are examples of things that we'll have to continue to monitor. The traffic is not as strong on some of our heavy oil and gas routes as it was before, uh, and if we need to tune those uh, schedules, we will. We have we have made significant reductions in flying in certain city pairs, especially over the last four to five years. And if we need to do that, we'll do that. We've closed cities. Uh, and if we need to do that, uh, again, in the future, we'll continue to manage uh, very dynamically and aggressively. All right, last question. May traffic. I know you're going to have some figures out soon. Are we going to like it? Well, you know, I think there's been some weakness in the economy, as, as you know and everybody else does here in the first half. Traffic has not been as strong as we had expected in the second quarter. Uh, I don't think that uh, you're going to see results that are any different than what uh, uh, Tammy Romo mentioned last week. Uh, we're satisfied with our second quarter progress. Uh, we are hopeful, as many people are, that uh, business is going to pick up in the second half of this year. And that will absolutely be a factor as to uh, how we manage our growth going forward. So uh, we intend to be very disciplined with our capacity. And uh, 2015 will be a high water mark for us. And we'll, we'll see our growth rates uh, decline in 2016 and then uh, again uh, even more significantly in 2017. At the same time, we're a low-cost producer and we will have opportunities to grow. And we're very excited about that. And you've been the most profitable and consistent airline and maybe business that I've dealt with. That's why you were at the top of the S&P last year. Gary Kelly, Chairman CEO of Southwest Airlines, thank you for your candor and thank you for joining us on Mad Money. Great, sir. Thank you, Jim. Great to be with you. Tough group right now. A lot of value. Big buyback. Dividend boost. You make the decision. Mad Money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.